Hi everyone, hope you all must be doing great. So in the last lecture, we were discussing section 32 of PGPP. 32 is related to depreciation. And in fact, we were discussing this part, section 32, 37, that what are the deductions which are allowed under PGPP. We already have completed three of the sections. 30 was related to building, any rent of building, repairs of building, insurance of building, rates and taxes of building, that building which you use in your business. It could be your factory, go down, showroom, even residential accommodation which you have provided to your employees because that building is also getting used in business. So if these types of expenses are incurred for that building, it is allowed. Second expense was section 31 related to plant and machinery and furniture and only two types of expenses. Repairs of such machine or furniture or insurance of such machine or furniture. And if there is any other expense apart from repairs and insurance, would it be allowed? The answer is yes, it will be allowed, but not in section 31. It will because 31 covers only two expenses. So if there is any other expense, for example, that there is a machine which we are using in our business and we have taken it on rent, rent of machine. So obviously section 30 will not cover because that, that is for related to building. Machine is there in 31, but only repairs and insurance. So rent of machine will be allowed, but not in 31. It will be allowed somewhere in 37. We will discuss that also, right? So other expenses related to plant machinery and furniture, apart from this, that if they are related to business, they could be allowed under section 37, which we will see today. 32 we have already discussed last uh, in the last class and in detail I have discussed that about uh, depreciation. Tell me which method do we charge in depreciation in uh, PGBP? It is WDV method on block of assets, right? Only for power generating units, uh, SLM can be used. But again, they have an option if they would like to choose WDV also, they can choose it. But in the very first year and if they choose WDV, they cannot go back to um, claim depreciation on SLM basis because that any method which is chosen in the first year will remain always, right? Okay. Now come to section 35, 35X scientific research, a very important section. So if you come to your book, this uh, book, uh, I, I believe that you must have already downloaded and some of you might have already taken the printout also because it was recommended if you take the printout. One more thing, one more important thing. I have also made uh, some MCQs available to you, to all my students, not only my um, Google Drive or Pendrive students, but to all my students, including my YouTube students also, it is av available to everyone. So again, it is available on the website rajatmoga.com, same uh, near that, just adjacent to that download section. So you will find MCQ link over there. So you can find MCQs also. As of now, I have uh, uh, made two or three chapters available, but uh, let's say in next, uh, I believe in a week's time or 10 days, I will make all the chapters available to you. So you can start practicing your MCQs also. So as in when I'm uh, completing revision also, please start practicing your MCQs as well, right? Okay. And also please let me know how you are finding that MCQs helpful. And please also let me know, let me know that how you are finding this revision lectures is it helpful to you is or they are not helpful to you whatever your feedback is please post that in the comment because it really um because that is how we will able to communicate if you'll not uh suggest me that what is extra which which you want if you need something extra if you need any other help please let me know and also please let me know are you finding this uh, video lectures helpful good bad what whatever your feedback is please mention that in the comment section please do mention that in the comment section it's not necessary whether you would like to like it button. It's not necessary whether you would like to subscribe, but please do mention me the feedback, how you are finding this lecture. And if there is any improvement area, please mention that also, right? Okay. So uh, this is section 35. 35 is related to scientific research, a very easy section. And uh, it's very important also from both examination point of view. In fact, the entire chapter is important. First of all, understand that there are two kinds of uh, scientific research. There are two parts here of section 35. One is in-house research and second is outside research. In-house research means that you are uh, getting this research conducted in your own business, for your own business. So it should be related to your business. It should be related to your business, right? 
whereas outside research is a kind of donation it's a kind of contribution which you make so you can make this contribution to any approved institutions like you can make it make this contribution to iits indian institute of technology you can make it you can make this contribution to a national laboratory or to any approved university college institution or approved companies also who conduct such research so that is called outside research so this is a kind of donation it might relate to your business it might not relate to your business that is okay so this can be unrelated to your business also can be unrelated it might happen that you have contributed and the research the field on which they are conducting research it might relate to your business coincidentally right but that is purely not relevant that it should be related to your business no outside research can be related or unrelated fine second important thing is which is most important especially for your mcq that's it that this outside research deduction is available only under optional scheme if the assessee is following if the assessee is following default tax regime please don't allow this outside research deduction in house you can allow it, but outside research deduction is not available if the assessee is following default tax regime only in optional tax regime it is allowed not under default tax regime i believe that you will be able to remember this so i was saying in house research in both the regime is it is allowed whether you are following old or new but outside research only under old scheme old scheme now we call it optional scheme so it is only in optional scheme not in default okay few more uh, things about this outside research how much deduction is allowed 100% amount which you contribute but please remember you have to contribute to approved institutions or to iits or national laboratory they are government institution they are of, of course approved right second important thing is that it could be your scientific research also or statistical science or social research also but the important point is said that sir if their approval is withdrawn let's say if such university or institution is fake and government find finds said the authority finds it that it's a fake institution now they have they are withdrawing the approval they are withdrawing they are making it unapproved so what will happen of your contribution you you just have to see this the date on which you have contributed the the date on which you have donated the amount whether it was approved or not if it was approved then your deduction will remain there will be no impact on your deduction because you don't know that in future whether it will be unapproved or not right your their approval will, will be withdrawn or not you just have to see at the time when you have made this contribution to them whether they were approved or not right so this was all about outside research simple simple 100% deduction is allowed second important thing which you should remember only under optional scheme i believe you will be able to remember this okay now let's talk about in house research in house research is related to, to your business because let's say there are so many companies especially these pharmaceutical company they keep on doing some research or other companies also so it is allowed for business assessee if they are uh, incurring expenses on in house research there can be two types of expenses there can be two types of expenses one could be your uh, revenue expenses second could be your capital expenses let's say for cap, uh, for your uh, scientific research you need machines you need building you need land also but this is a thumb rule that land deduction is never allowed under income tax act in any of the section in fact depreciation also we don't charge depreciation on land so land deduction if any expenses is expenditure you have incurred on land no deduction is allowed under income tax act in any of the section and, and uh, so is section 35 also so if you are incurring capital expenditure except land any capital expenditure is allowed and revenue expenses of course they are allowed so 100% reduction is allowed for revenue as well as capital expenses if you have incurred for in house research scientific research purpose simple second thing is that if you have incurred expenses before commencement before commencement of business are they also allowed the answer is yes they are also allowed but not beyond 3 years if it is pre commencement expenses you can take last 3 years but not beyond that it's okay so if examiner will tell you that these are the expenses which were incurred 4 years prior to commencement or 5 years prior to commencement sorry boss that will not be allowed we can take only last 3 years expenses fine next thing 
last three year expenses might be related to revenue might be related to your capital so capital expenses all allowed last three year expenses except land except land all three all capital expenses are allowed and what about revenue pre commencement before commencement revenue also it is limited to just two x type of expenses one is salary is allowed second is your raw material expenses allowed if you have incurred any revenue expenses apart from salary apart from raw material before commencement it will not be allowed only two types of expenses of before commencement revenue that is salary and raw material after commencement we have no issues with revenue all revenue expenses are allowed which are related to after commencement but if it is before commencement only two expenses right raw material and salary and i'll tell you salary also that too without perquisite although i have not mentioned it over here but yes please remember that is salary is allowed although examiner will not ask you this but still this is salary without perquisite okay okay another important thing is unabsorbed capital expenditure on scientific research this is similar treatment as unabsorbed depreciation in the last class i have told you what is what is unabsorbed depreciation see if we have let's say if we have depreciation of what was unabsorbed depreciation let's say we have profit before depreciation profit before depreciation let's say we have 10 lakh right rupees 10 lakh and current year depreciation is let's say rupees 7 lakh so there is no issue because depreciation is lower than this profit it's all these the entire depreciation can be allowed the entire depreciation can be allowed over here so we will remain with still we will remain with 3 lakh rupees profit so no issues we, we, we don't have any unabsorbed over here the entire depreciation gets absorbed into our profits so we still have 3 lakh rupees even if this depreciation uh, let's say it's not 7 lakh let's say even if it was 10 lakh then also we have no issues at all because we have sufficient profits available so that the entire depreciation can be absorbed right so still we can uh, charge the entire depreciation over here because we have sufficient profits available and but yes after charging the depreciation the profits will remain zero will become zero they will not go in minus they will not go a negative it will not become a negative figure still we have uh, a neutral balance that is nil but the problem arises when our profit is before depreciation is 10 lakh but current year depreciation let's say the current year depreciation is 11 lakh then what will happen here our profits are not sufficient our profits cannot absorb the entire depreciation so tell me how much depreciation can be absorbed here sir depreciation is 11 we have 10 lakh profit so here we can only absorb up to 10 lakh okay whatever the profits are available you just absorb that depreciation so 10 lakh depreciation can be claimed my profit will become zero and 1 lakh depreciation can i say that that there is a 1 lakh rupees loss business loss no for from depreciation we will not be will not get business losses right from other expenses we can get business losses it can result in negative figure it can result in negative figure but depreciation is a very humble guy it's a very humble sweet guy depreciation will tell us that uh, sir whatever the profits are available if profits are available i'll come if profits are not available then I'll not come. No issues. I'll I'll come next year or next year, next year. And he's a very humble guy and he never dies. That is the reason we can carry forward this unabsorbed depreciation also for unlimited years. Do you remember that? So in the same way, here what will happen? Sir, one 10 lakh depreciation can be charged, 1 lakh depreciation will remain unabsorbed. That is what we call unabsorbed depreciation same concept is related to unabsorbed same concept will relate to unabsorbed capital expenses or capital expenditure on scientific research capital expenditure on scientific i'm not saying about revenue expenses i'm saying capital expenditure on scientific research we have same treatment let's say profit before capital expenditure on scientific research is let's say five lakh and we have capital expenditure on scientific research let's say capital expenditure on scientific research we have of rupees 6 lakh so in this case up to 5 lakh would be absorbed 1 lakh will remain unabsorbed same treatment like unabsorbed depreciation same treatment we will give to unabsorbed capital expenditure on scientific research also 
so if profits are there they can be absorbed if profits are not there they will remain unabsorbed and we call them unabsorbed capital expenditure in scientific research i believe you have you now remember that you are able to recall that okay so unabsorbed capital expenditure in scientific research shall be taken uh, will be carried forward and will be treated in the same manner as unabsorbed appreciation okay so another important point is that if you have purchased any asset for scientific research purpose in case you have purchased any asset for scientific research purpose and you have taken 100% deduction on that right so please tell me how much is the written down value sir zero why because if you have purchased any capital expenditure if you have purchased sorry if you have purchased any asset for scientific research purpose let's say you have purchased a machine for scientific research purpose it was of rupees 8 lakh so you have claimed entire deduction 100% deduction is allowed 8 lakh you have claimed now, now the written down value of the machine is zero now so after some time you don't need that machine in scientific research purpose you don't need that machine for scientific research purpose so what will you do of that machine either you will sell it directly or you can use that machine in your normal business so let's say if you use that machine in your normal business if you use that asset in your normal business that that we call it transfer of a scientific research asset to a normal business so what will happen nothing will happen it will form part of the block it will form part of a normal assets block so if it's a machine which let's say uh, the eligibility of that machine that it is such that that the the depreciation if would have been charged is 15% so it will go in that block of plant machinery where 15% depreciation is charged let's say if it was a computer if for if it was originally a scientific research for scientific research purpose we have used a computer and after that we do no longer needs it it for scientific research then we will transfer it to that block that is plant machinery which has depreciation rate of 40% right so it will form part of that respective block if we transfer it to normal business so we will say additions during the, uh, the year say in that block additions are made but at which value nil why because it because we have already claimed 100% depreciation uh, deduction in past so the wdv becomes zero so if it will be transferred to a normal business it will come at nil value that is again very important right and if it is subsequently sold out so you will be uh, treating them in the same manner as you are selling any part of the block of the asset right if any part of the block of the asset is getting sold because first it was transferred into normal business and then you are selling it so it will be sold in the same manner as part of the block is getting sold but what if if you have not transferred into normal business but you are directly selling that asset then what will happen and again a number line will come into picture i i think i have already explained you the number line in the last lecture also when i was explaining you about the power generating units so let me take an example let's say you have purchased a machine of rupees 8 lakh for scientific research purpose for scientific research purpose you have take uh, purchased a machine and because in the year when you have purchased this machine you have claimed 100% deduction on it under section 35 you have claimed a 100% deduction on it under section 35 so how much deduction was claimed 8 lakh so tell me after claiming the deduction the value of this machine becomes zero nil right so let's say after 4 5 6 years now you are selling this machine now you no longer need this machine in scientific research purpose now you are selling this machine let's say you are selling this machine for rupees 2 lakh so what will happen so how this the tax treat it will be treated in our income tax and our pgpp how it will be treated you will follow the same number line which i have already explained you in uh, the power generating concept as well tell me what was the original cost so the original cost was how much 8 lakh original cost was 8 lakh and what is the written down value so written down value is zero because we have already claimed entire 100% deduction on this so where should i write because you understand if i'll go this way the number keeps on increasing and if i'll go this way the number will keep on decreasing so what is where should i keep uh, put this written down value point so written down value point will be somewhere over here right it is zero zero wdv is nil i will write nil okay now you are selling it for rupees 2 lakh now it is not rupees 2 it is 2 lakh right so now you are selling it for rupees 2 lakh tell me is it a profit or a loss sir it's a profit because the wdv is zero and now you are selling it for 2 lakh 
So if you are selling it for 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 4 lakh, 5 lakh, up to 8 lakh, this is your PGBP income. This is your PGBP income. This is taxable as section 41 deemed business income. This is deemed business income. So if it is getting sold for more than, obviously it will be more than zero, up to 8 lakh it is PGBP income. And beyond 8 lakh, I believe that you now can say that this is your capital gain. So let's say if you have sold it for 10 lakh, let's say if you have sold it for 10 lakh, so you have the value was nil, so there is a 10 lakh profit. So how you will say, sir, 8 lakh up to this original cost, that is 8 lakh is PGBP under section 41 and remaining 2 lakh is capital gain. But yes, uh, you will, how you calculate your capital gain, sir, 10 lakh minus 8 lakh. So 10 lakh is the full value of consideration, 8 lakh is cost of acquisition. If it is short term, then you can say 10 minus 8, 8 lakh is cost of acquisition. And if it is long term, please you have to index this 8 lakh also, you have to index this cost also. So it will not actually be 2 lakh, it will be something less, right? So you understand how you will calculate your capital gain, that also we will see in our capital gain revision. So this income will be taxable under 41. I will show you the section 41 also. If you will turn, come to page number, it comes, let come to this page. Mm, it is, see, Dean business income. This is page number. Yes, this is 5.19. This is 5.19. Section 41. Sale of scientific research asset. SLM method of depreciation. Right. And sale of power generating also, also written over here. That is balancing charge. Right. Up to the original cost is your PGBP income. And this is all. There are some other things also, but we will discuss them later. But yes, it is covered in section 41. So this income, which I was telling you, this income was your PGBP taxable under section 41. Come back to section 35. So this was section 35. That is in-house research, outside research and how you will treat it. If you are transferring this uh, asset to your normal business, it will be um, forming part of that block to which it relates, but at nil value, right? And if you are selling it later on after using a normal business, if you are selling it, it will be sold in the same manner as part of the dip block is getting sold. Second point is second case is if you have not transferred into normal business, but now you are selling it directly, then how you will sell it? Individual asset is getting sold. Please draw a number line and you will be able to get, you will be able to determine how much is your PGBP income and how much is your capital gain. Okay. This was section 35 and I've already made our number line here as well. So sale of scientific research asset after using a normal business, same treatment as part of the block is getting sold without using a normal business. You can draw this for number line. So this was your original cost. This is your WDV nil. This area is the PGBP income under section 41 and over and above original cost would be your capital gain. How do you compute your capital gain? That's that we will see in section 50A. That is the capital gain chapter. Okay. So this was section 35. Okay. Another important thing, next section is 35AD. 35AD is related to, this is investment link deduction and we also call it as a specified business deduction. 14 types of businesses are allowed to claim this deduction. But, 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 important thing is that if the assessee is following, if the assessee is following default tax regime, 115BAC, I'll also, I can also call it new tax regime, then 35 AD deduction is not available. This 35 AD is only and only available under optional scheme, only under optional scheme. Please remember this. My dear students, please remember this. It's very important. Specifically, uh, it can come in your MCQ. It can come in your MCQ. Examiner will confuse you. He'll, he'll give you MCQ in such a manner that you might get confused. But please, my dear child, please don't get confused over there. Don't get confused over there. So only under optional scheme, it is allowed. If the assay is following default tax regime, please don't allow 35 AD. Okay. So optional tax scheme. So what is the provision over there? It is related to capital expenditure. So if these 14 types of business, so there is a list of 14 types of business and it's very easy. I'll make you read also at once. 
So these 14 types of business, you don't have to remember the list entirely, but yes, you should go through this list twice or thrice so that you will be able to recall, yes, this business is also related to specified business. Okay. So if the assessee is following optional tax regime and they would like to claim 35 AD, they can claim it. If they are running these 14 types of businesses, these 14 types of business, we call it a specified business. So whatever the capital expenditure they have made, this section 35 AD is only related to capital expenditure. This is not related to revenue expenses. First thing first, right? Optional scheme, 35 AD optional scheme and only related to capital expenditure. So whatever the capital expenditure which you have incurring, which you are incurring in these 14 businesses, you can claim 100% deduction. You can claim 100% deduction in the very first year, right? But yes, three capital expenditure is not allowed. One is on land, obviously. Second is goodwill. Third is financial instruments. Please remember that three kinds of capital uh, assets expenditure related to your land, goodwill and financial instruments are not allowed. Other capital expenditure are allowed. Let's say you have purchased a machine, you have purchased furniture, you have purchased building, it's okay. For that, we can claim 100% deduction, right? So let me uh, read it out. What, uh, what, are, what types of businesses are covered over here? Here are, we have 14 types of businesses. First is cross-country natural gas pipeline. What is cross-country natural gas pipeline? You understand? You understand natural gas pipeline. What is cross-country? So if there is are some co uh, companies who lays these uh, pipelines from one state to another state. So within India, there are so many uh, underground pipelines which are going off na natural gas pipeline. So if the assessee is engaged in laying, operating and maintaining these natural gas pipeline, they are allowed, they are, they are deemed to be that they are carrying a specified business. So if they are spending on their capital expenditure, 100% reduction is allowed, but not on land, not on goodwill and either on uh, your financial instruments. Second is cold chain facility, cold chain facilities, cold storage. Third is warehouse for agriculture produce, not industrial produce, your agriculture produce. So if you are running a business and the nature of the business is that you have a warehouse, you have a warehouse where you store agriculture produce. So that is also a business. We have one more warehouse that where you can store sugar storage. Sugar storage is also allowed. But yes, sugar is not. Why sugar? We have an extra uh, point over here. Why it is not included? in this business because you understand that sugar is industrial produce it is not agriculture produce sugar cane is an agriculture produce but not sugar right so storage of sugar is also allowed but not any other industrial product not any other uh, product edible oils etc are not covered over here they are not a specified business okay so warehousing for agriculture produce hotel of two star or above category hospital of 100 beds or more slum housing redevelopment, affordable housing scheme, production of fertilizers, inland container depot, custom freight station, which we commonly call it as dry ports are covered over here. Beekeeping business, warehousing for sugar storage, I've already covered, iron ore slurry pipeline, semiconductor wafer fabrication, new infrastructure facilities. So these are the list. In regular classes, I used to tell about each and every business, what type of business it is. So, but right now it's a revision class. So you understand, you already know what type of business it is. So yes, you have to just read these lists two, twice or thrice. So these are the 14 types of business. And if you, if you are exp uh, expending some capital expenditure, you can claim 100% deduction, except those three assets, land, goodwill, or financial instruments. Second thing, are the expenses which are incurred before commencement are also allowed? The answer is yes. If you have incurred capital expenses, related to uh, the period which is before your commencement of business that is also allowed sir last three years or we can go beyond also here you can here there is no limit of three years so here uh, you can claim all the expenses which we have incurred before commencement also you can claim it in the year when when you have commenced the business right provided you capitalize those expenses in your books right so if it is for last three years, it's okay. And even if it is beyond three years, four, it was last four years, last five years, then also it is allowed. In scientific research, we only take three years. Here, there is no problem as such, right? And if it is capitalized, you can claim them in the year when this deduction, when the, uh, sorry, the business is commenced. And obviously, if the, if you have expended something 
amounting more than 10,000 rupees. If it is more than 10,000 rupees, please be aware you should not spend that amount in cash. Don't use cash or bearer check or cross check. It will not be allowed. It will only be allowed if you have made a payment through a banking mode. It should be like uh, account pay bank draft, uh, account pay check, account pay bank draft, or it could be your any FDRTGS or any banking mode, but it should not be through cash, right? And th if 35 AD is adopted, then section 10 AA and chapter 6 say part C deduction is not allowed. So you, so you understand if SSE is claiming 35 AD, obviously if he's following optional scheme, then he can claim 35 AD. If they are claiming 35 AD, then 10 AA deduction will not be available. 10 AA, we see that there is a deduction for SEZ, a SEZ a units and SEZ developers, 10 AA, which we will see in deduction chapter, right? So if they are claiming deduction under this section, then this section will not be allowed. And also chapter 6 say part C deductions are not allowed. The entire chapter 6 is not allowed. No, only part C. What part C consists of, you understand the entire chapter 6 is from 80C to 80U. Right. Chapter 6A, we will do also a revision of chapter 6A that is from 80C to 80U. But we are saying only part C is not allowed. What is part C of chapter 6A? Part C is from section 80I series to 80RRB will not be allowed. 80I to 80RRB. And I tell you most of the sections are not there in your C intermediate course. They are all in CA final. So mainly 80IA series, SSE can claim 80 IA, IB, IC, etc. That will also not be allowed. Right. That is part C. So if the SSE is claiming deduction in the 35 AD, 10 AA and part C of chapter 6A is not allowed. And if the asset is transferred to normal business before 8 years, see what SSE might do is they can make a text planning that first they have purchased an asset and they are showing that we have purchased it for a specified business and later on they are transferring it from specified to normal business. So we can say that if you are transferring it after 8 years, then we have no issues with it. You can transfer this asset into your normal business after eight years, then we are okay with it. But if you will transfer this asset into your normal business before eight years, then whatever deduction which we have given it to you at the time when you have purchased the asset, whatever the deduction of 35 AD which we have given it to you, we will take that as that deduction back. How we will take? We'll make your income. So if this asset is transferred before eight years, if this asset is transferred before eight years into normal business, so whatever deduction which we have given it to you, we will take it back. We will take it back, right? But assessee will say, okay, sir, take it back, but at least give me the depreciation which you would have given me if I would have used this asset from the very beginning in normal business, there would be some depreciation. Please give me that depreciation. Okay, so we will say, okay, that is fine. So what is the treatment of it if we transfer this asset before eight years? So whatever the deduction of 35 AD we have given it to you, we will take it back, but we will also consider the depreciation of that period. So that is the reason I have shown it like that, that whatever is the, P, whatever, what is the PGBP income? So the amount of deduction which you have claimed earlier in 35 AD will become PGBP income, but we will reduce that by the amount of deemed depreciation, right? So I believe that you are able to recall that this provision also. And again, a very important thing, which is, which will also be discussed in your set of chapter that if you have losses from this specified business, it can be set off only from any other specified business only. So we can look it in this manner that this 14 type of businesses are one family. These 14 types of businesses are one family. If there is any loss in any of these business, any of the family member, if there is, if any of the family member will suffer a loss in that case, he can only claim that loss. He can only set off that loss between this family. Among this family only, they can go and ask for the uh, set off, right? So if specified business has loss, it can be set off only from any other specified business only. So if we have a loss in hotel business, it can ask help of hospital. That is fine. So between these 14 family members, they can share the losses, right? It will be set off. And also, if it is could not be set off, it will be carried forward. If it is not carry, uh, set off in next year, it will be again be carried forward. For how many years it could be carried forward? For unlimited number of years, you can carry forward such losses, right? 
So generally we understand for a uh, normally business losses can only be carried forward for eight years, but specified business losses can be carried forward for unlimited years. And what is uh, what about speculative business losses? Four years. That we will see in um, set of chapter also. Okay. Then we have next section is 35D. 35D is preliminary expenses. Again, an important section, 35D preliminary expenses. Uh, it's a very small section. It says that whatever the preliminary expenses which you incurred, it can be allowed, but in five equal installments. In five equal installments, they can be allowed. So whatever is the eligible amount which can which you can claim, only one one fifth will be allowed in this year. Remaining four fifth will be allowed in next four years. That is total five years. So how uh, examiner will ask you this question? Let's say he will not. I don't think that he will ask you. Generally, if you see uh, the past papers, they don't ask about this 35D individually, they just make it part of the entire question, the full question, they, uh, they will make it part, they, they can ask you one adjustment on 35D. So how they will ask you, they will give you a PL account and of any SSE and they will say, sir, the preliminary expenses is, let's say rupees 1 lakh, they will not say utter any other thing, they will not say any other thing, it's a very hidden type of adjustment. So you will say, sir, preliminary expenses are allowed under section 35D, so we are allowing these expenses. But please remember, it will only be allowed in five equal installments. So please, what you have to do is you can only allow one fifth this year. One fifth you can allow this year. So twenty thousand, please allow this year. Remaining eighty thousand will be allowed in subsequent years. One fifth, one fifth, one fifth. Right. So here, what you have to do is just allow out of this one lakh. Let's say the amount is one lakh. Only allow one fifth. Only allow twenty thousand. Remaining eighty thousand, please add it back. Please add it back. Right. Second thing which examiner can ask you uh, that they can also give you the cost of the project also. So please remember these expenses are allowed. Whatever is the actual expenses, you have to compare it with 5% of the cost of the project, whichever is lower, whichever is lower, only that amount is eligible, but that too divided by 5, divided by 5. So eligible SSE for 35D is only resident SSE or Indian companies. Non-resident for non-resident 35D is not available. Amount of deduction is one fifth of the eligible amount. I have already discussed, and the eligible amount is actual expenses which you have incurred, or five percent of the cost of the project, whichever is lower, right? But yes, if it is a company SSE, if the SSE is a company, which generally in CA intermediate they will not ask you about company SSE, but still it's there in your syllabus. That is the reason I am uh, just mentioning that uh, that also. So if it's a company SSE, so what you will do is. So uh, first of all, you will compare five percent of the cost of the project with five percent of capital employed. So first, compare five percent of the cost of the project and five percent of capital employed, whichever is higher. So first, take the higher amount, and this higher amount should be compared with the actual expenses. So whichever is lower. So normally, if it is a non-company SSE, just compare actual expenses and five percent of the cost of the project, whichever is lower. But if it is a company SSE. Compare five percent of the cost of the project, five percent of capital employed, whichever is higher. This higher amount should be compared with actual expenses, whichever is lower. That is the eligible amount. Please allow that eligible amount in five equal installments: one fifth, one fifth, one fifth. Okay. So, what are these uh, notified or what are these preliminary expenses? These expenses are what you incurred before commencement of business, or uh, if you are ex uh, expanding your business, so at the time when you incur these expenses. So it can be your um, preparation of project report, pre preparation of feasibility report, any legal expenses. So these are the types of expenses which you can incur. And yes, if it's a company SSE, there are other expenses also which are specific to company like uh, share issue expenses, debenture issue expenses, or like uh, re registration expenses, ROC expenses, registration of companies expenses or uh, printing of memorandum, article of association or prospectus. So these are the expenses which you incur before commencement. So uh, if it is a company SSE, then drafting and printing of MO and AOA memorandum or articles of association, registration of company expenses, share issue or debenture issue expenses, expenses incurred in the issue of prospectus, etc. That is issue expenses. So these are some preliminary expenses for companies. Otherwise, for normal, other than non-companies, these are the, some of the expenses. So generally, you just have to remember two things. Preliminary expenses are allowed, but only one fifth, right? Same goes for VRS expenses. VRS expenses, because uh, there could be some companies who incur expenses related to VRS. So if it is VRS expenses also, then they are also allowed. But please 
same treatment only one fifth will be allowed because these are allowed in five equal installments right okay next is section 36 section 36 is other deductions again i am thinking to stop right here and we will discuss section 36 and 37 in our next part right let's keep this part till here okay i'll see you in the next lecture till then thank you so much bye and take care